The collection of utilities used to work with users is called the User API, and we've put together a module that demonstrates many of the aspects of the User API, as well as some additional utilities. So go ahead and navigate to your Build a Module resource folder, and copy the Persons folder. This is a module called Persons, and it includes a number of examples. And then go ahead and open up your Drupal base directory, and paste this module inside your Sites, All, Modules, Custom folder. Go ahead and expand the folder, and expand the Steps folder inside of it. This includes the steps as we work through building up our module. Open up the persons.module file in your editor, and also open up the first step, which is called persons.module.savingData. Go ahead and copy the entire code in the first step, and paste it into your persons.module file, and save it. Okay, in this example, what we're going to do is add a setting to our user settings page that allows a user to select whether they want their search history tracked or not. And then we're going to save that data inside of the user object every time they conduct a search. So let's scroll up to the top of this page and work through this line by line. Our first function is called permissions form alter, and this is an implementation of hook form alter. If you haven't worked through the videos on forms yet, you may want to just to get a background in this, but basically this hook allows us to adjust and add to existing forms. And what we want to do is take the user settings form. Let's go ahead and jump to that in our browser. You'll find it at user slash user ID slash edit. So this is our user edit form here. And what we want to do is add a setting here that allows users to select whether they're going to have their search history saved. Okay, so in this, we're doing a quick check to see if the form user category property is a count. Now this allows us to check for different types of user forms. For example, there's a form when a user is created, but there's also a form when a user is edited and they have different names. One way to check for all of these different forms at once is by looking at the user category property of the form. If that's true, then we're going to grab the account from the user property in the form, and this includes all of the data of the user. So you may have seen in previous examples where we use the user variable to grab data about the user. This same data is stored in the form as the user property. So we're pulling that out into a separate variable. Next, we're adding two items to the form, one here and one here. The first is a field set, and this is simply to wrap around our setting to make it easy to distinguish from other groups of settings on the user settings page. So this one has a key of search history, a type of field set, a title of search history, and then we're giving it a weight of four to drop it down below all of the other options on the user settings page. Next, we're adding a checkbox, and we're storing this inside of our field set. So this is search history, and then we're giving it the key of store search history, a type of checkbox, a title of store search history, and we're giving it a little description to make it clear what this setting is for. The description is, would you like to store search history and display a list on your user page? And then we're giving it a default value. Now we want this default value to be set if the user has already selected an option for this in the past. Otherwise, we're going to default to zero or unchecked. So we're going to check to see if the data has been stored in the account variable. So we haven't gotten to this point yet, but in the next step we will. And if that data exists, then we're going to use it to populate the checkbox, either as a zero or a one, so unchecked or checked. And then if not, we're going to just default to zero, which is unchecked. 